morning, I'd like to invite any children who are here this morning to come up for a time with children. And Vinroy, can I ask if you would mind, I don't want to accidentally knock over your iPad. <laughs> Thank you. And um, you guys can have a seat anywhere up here. You can even sit on the conductor stand if you want, which is pretty cool. So for those of you who I don't know very well, my name is Pastor Katrina, and I'm one of the ministers at Union Kong. And it's nice to see a lot of familiar faces and some newer faces this morning. And I've also invited my friend Jeremy um, to come uh, for this time because we want to talk about music and maybe sing a little bit together. I think there was a song you were thinking of. Yes, yes, and I think our friends from Grace might actually know this song. There's a song that you sung every Sunday. Does anyone know what that might be? Right before you go to your learning center. No. <laughs> yeah, do you have a song that you've been singing for the last couple weeks or months before you go to your learning center? Yeah. Jesus loves me. Yeah, does anyone from Union Kong know that song? Not yet? Well, it's a good thing we're going to learn it today. Exactly, yes. So I'll sing it, and then you can sing it back to me. I'm sure our big people can help us as well. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. 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 The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me so. And now we're going to put it all together. We're all going to sing it together. So, so uh, I invite everyone to come back up. Yeah, yeah. pretty awesome. But I have a question for you. Why, why do we sing songs like that? What do you think? I could just tell you Jesus loves you. Sometimes I do, hopefully. Sometimes in the other messages I might just tell you. Is there anything special about music? Yeah, Morgan. The music can bring us together. Absolutely. I mean, look at this Sunday. We have two different churches worshiping together. We have guest musicians. Music is all around the world. Music is all around the world. That's right. Even People all around the world. Them. Some animals, yeah, like maybe some birds make music. Yeah. Uh, Can you say a little bit more about that? Yes. Yes. So there was a famine somewhere in Africa, and it was really important that we let pe more people know about it and raise some money to send food. And so some famous people sang a really 
um, impressive special song and it helped raise a lot of money to feed people. That's a great example. Yeah. Music is a universal language, yeah. So even sometimes when we don't speak a, a language, um, the rhythm and, um, and the, the tune brings us together, we can communicate, yeah. Ooh, music is good at describing emotions, I love that, yeah, yeah. Wow, you have great answers. So I have one more for you, which is that did you know that music helps us remember things? Like, who remembers how you learned the alphabet? Yeah. Yeah, we sang it. Over and over and over and over again, yes. And did you know that a lot of the music that we sing in church, and especially the gospel music that we're singing this Sunday, we sing it because it helps us remember messages that are so important. We don't want to forget them, and we want to make sure that we share them with other people and pass them on. And so um, that's one of the extra special things about music. And the music of gospel music, does anyone know what gospel means? Pop quiz. It's a hard one. Something. It means something. So I heard that, that Vinroy was telling the choir this, but um, to any of the adults, what does gospel mean? Good news. Yeah, so we call the books in the Bible that are the stories about Jesus the gospels. And that's the same word we use for this kind of music because it's about good news. It's good news that God is with people. And in this particular music, it's about the African-American experience and how they pass songs on about God's love for them and the way that God was working in and through them. And so we are so fortunate to get to experience that joy and that good news together this morning. So will you guys pray with me? Maybe. Will you pray with me? I don't yes. Have Bible. yes. Okay. Will you repeat after me? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for music. Thank you for music. It helps me to know that Jesus loves me. It helps me to know that Jesus loves me. Amen. 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 All right. So you are invited to sing with us. We're going to sing Jesus Loves Me one more time as you can either go back to your seats or if you're super little, there is child care available. My friend Peter at his church uh, sang that song and a woman came up to him after the service in tears and just said, I love it when we sing that song to the kids because I just wish I had known that growing up and how my life would have been different if I had grown up knowing that God loves me and the idea that these kids get to grow up from the get-go knowing that Jesus loves them. I pray that it makes all the difference. It's for that reason that we confess our sins as a reminder that God loves us no matter what. There's nothing that we have done. There is nothing that we have left undone. There is nothing that has been done to us that can stop God from loving us in Jesus Christ. So you are invited into a time of prayer to silently give over to God the things that you uh, know that you need to give over to God, or maybe it is a prayer, Lord, you know, open my eyes to, to the work that, that we each need to do. In that spirit, let us pray. 
Friends, in scripture we are told that as far as east is from the west, so far have our sins been removed from us. Believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. We are free. Live in peace and blessed assurance.
God as we meditate on your love. Prepare our minds to hear your word. Move our hearts to embrace what we hear and strengthen our will to follow your way. This we pray through Jesus the Christ. Amen. The scripture reading today is from Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 25. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had the spirit of divination and and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you the, a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them to the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, "These men are for us as Romans to adopt. Oh, sorry. These men are disturbing our city. They are, they are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe." A, the crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had been giving them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If you have been hanging out in church sanctuaries long enough, you will have a library of music that for you just cuts you to the quick. It's your, they're your heart songs, the songs that, depending on the season of life that you are walking through, you either sing them with joy and exuberance or you can't sing them at all because you're so choked up. As a kid, I remember going to worship with my, we were visiting my grandparents up in western New York and at the New Fane United Methodist Church, they had worship outside. I remember a blue sky and green grass and having to carry the, the folding chair over to where we were gonna worship. And I don't think my grandpa ever said a word about his faith to me, but during one of the hymns I looked up and he was crying and I knew his faith was real. In Sunday school when I was a kid, I remember learning about Paul and Silas singing in prison. And I don't, I don't know, I, Imagine. I don't think I even thought about what songs that they that they might have sung. But I think as a kid, I was thinking that they were, you know, they were just carefree. You know, I've got Jesus. What problems do I have? You know, and they were singing, I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. You know, and now I read it again as an adult, and my gosh, they were arrested, beaten, stripped, and beaten, and then shackled and put in the innermost parts of this prison. What kind of songs were they singing? If the Psalms were their hymn book, were they singing, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth, or were they singing, how long, O Lord? Have you forgotten me? Will you forget me forever? Some of the Psalms are very dark, and I was joking around with a women's Bible study on Wednesday. I said, can you imagine some of those hymns sung in like four-part harmony? You know, like, let's dash their heads against the rocks. Let's dash their head, you know. And okay, sopranos, let's dash their head, you know. And then just the, the bass is just come in with rocks, 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 you know. <laughs> and then St. Pam said to me, she's like, no, they just chanted those in deep, dark tones. And next time you read some of those psalms, just imagine that in just a deep bass singing those dark songs. I read in a paper, it was a speech given at a conference by John Piper entitled, Singing, Suffering, and Scripture. And he came to the, the conclusion, and he was talking about singing that he couches as music that we sing to God and music that is worthy of God. And then he unpacks that, but I, I won't. 
but he observed three things in scripture. There are times when suffering takes away our song and we can't sing. There are times when we sing through our suffering and then there's the songs that we sing on the other side of it. There are times in our life when silence is all that is warranted. And to sing would be impossible. Hypocrisy, insincere, or just torture. I mean, and there is a psalm where, uh, and I think I can think of at least two modern songs that are based off it. One is by Bob Dylan and the other is from the musical Godspell. You know, on the willows there, we gave up our lives. For our captors there required of us songs for their mirth. You know, like sing a song, sing us a song, one of the songs of Zion to taunt them. There are times when silence, when suffering steals our song and we are left in silence and we can't sing. But after a time, music finds us, music with a capital M, the creator, the author, the composer of life. And we'll sing, sing songs like, I love the Lord who heard my cry, who pitied every groan long as I live and troubles rise, I will hasten to God's throne. That's a song, I wish I was brave enough to sing it for you, but I'm not. Uh, it was a song that I learned at, as a part of a gospel choir in seminary and it's become one of my heart songs. I love the Lord who heard my cry and pitied every groan long as I live and troubles rise, I will hasten to God's throne. We sing because God keeps us keeping on. God gets us out of bed in the morning, promises us to see us through and be our strength. The last hymn that we're gonna to sing together this morning was written by Thomas A. Dorsey, not Tommy Dorsey, Thomas A. Dorsey, the father of gospel music. It was back in 1932, he was 32 years old, newly married, and he was living in Chicago, but he went to St. Louis for a revival, and he was the featured singer, and his wife was nine months pregnant, and he wasn't sure whether he should go, but he was the featured singer, and so he went, and he remembers being up on stage, and they kept requesting song after song after song, and when he finally got up, off stage, a young boy ran up to him with a tele telegram. He opened it and it said, your wife just died. And he writes, when I got back, I learned that Nettie had given birth to a boy. I swung between grief and joy. Yet that night, the baby died. I buried Nettie and our little boy together in the same casket. And then I fell apart. For days I closeted myself, I felt that God had done me an injustice. I didn't want to serve him anymore or write gospel songs, I just wanted to go back to the jazz world that I knew so well. I was lost in grief. Everyone was kind to me, especially a friend, Professor Fry, who seemed to know what I needed. And then on a Saturday night, he took me to a neighborhood music school, it was quiet. The late evening sun crept through the curtained windows. I sat down at the piano and my hands began to browse over the keys. And he wrote, precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. The next Sunday that song was delivered to uh, the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta where Martin Luther King Sr was the pastor, and he said the church tore apart singing it, and we're singing it almost a 100 years later. He was silent in his grief. Song has le had left him, but music found him again as a solace, a balm to his soul, B-A-L-M, to his soul. And he's saying because it was God that was gonna see him through. And then on the other side of our grief and our suffering and our pain, we can sing songs like, Oh, Love That Will Not Let Me Go, or I Know That My Redeemer Lives by Nicole C. Mullen, which I listened in the car on the way here, or Amazing Grace, or Give Me Jesus, or What Are the Songs of Your Heart? So this morning, if you find your play, yourself in a place where there is no music to be sung, I pray that you have friends who can sit with you and honor the silence 
and may we all be those friends. But I trust, because we worship the living God, that music will find you again. And for those who are singing through suffering, who invoke the Spirit, who testify that leaning into the everlasting arms of God during the worst of times is your strength, your witness is a godsend thank you. To the apostles Paul and Silas, we are still telling your stories 2,000 years later. And for those who sing on the other side, who can sympathize and empathize and witness to your own resurrection, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May it be so. In Jesus' name. Amen.